Show.com for all the other stuff. Thanks again to Swisher Sweats for helping out in the video department today. Uh, today is our penultimate show in the uh, studios here in Independence at Oak Tree. Uh, the first live one downtown is going to be on Tuesday. So uh, for people uh, hitting me up about our last show today, Monday will be our final show here. And then we'll uh, scoot it downtown for Tuesday. Comedian Ryan Dalton is in town next week. I think he, purely coincidentally, is going to end up being our first in-studio guest in the new studios. Uncle love Party that. back I in Northeast that. Ohio, Aww. right? Full circle. He mm-hmm. was one of the first... When I first came to Cleveland and was getting the lay of the land, Ryan Dalton was the guy. Mike Polk and Ryan Dalton were the guys in local comedy. Yep. And, and so moved to L.A. That's right. Big fish moving to a big pond. You stay here where the pond is small. You stay big, right? <laughs> <laughs> you stay big. So Uncle Party on Wednesday... <laughs> Possibly Steve Byrne on Thursday, I hope. He was your headliner, of course, for the uh, 10th annual Alan Cox Show Comedy Tour, the last one we did. He's doing next weekend at Hilarity, so I'm hoping, because we're out on Friday, so I'm hoping that he can uh, make it on Thursday. And then, in a few weeks, the return of Dr. Ryan Berglund for Is It Red? He will join us on the 16th of September. Do you remember... The 16th of, of September. September. That's right. So uh, for the if you're a new listener to the show, Dr. Ryan Berglund is a urologist with the world-renowned Cleveland Clinic. And um, he we have dudes call in with all manner of uh, problems down there, and he tries to help them out. And he hasn't joined us. Uh, his last time on the show was right before the pandemic. The very last day of February in 2020 was the last installment of Is It Red? So he'll join us in a few weeks. Barring any, you know, changes in anyone's schedule. Howard Stern's father died. Uh, I don't know how many people still pay attention to Howard Stern. Uh, He's over there on satellite radio, has been there for a long, long time. His parents, unbelievably, still alive. Um, The word started to trickle out this morning. Uh, that Ben Stern died. He was 99 years old. He'd been ill for a while. Uh, If you are a Stern fan, and I am, uh, he takes the bulk of the summer off. So the word started to trickle out because he mentioned it in passing uh, in an article in a local New York magazine about painting. Because he's a painter in his free time. And um, I came late to Howard Stern because um, I never really heard him until I moved to Pittsburgh because uh, Chicago was one of the few markets where he didn't succeed. He flopped in Chicago because I think by the time he got there, Chicago was such an important market for radio back in the day that all of these, you know, uh, supernova talents had gone through. Everybody at some point wanted to work in Chicago. So by the time his show got there, everybody had already heard the stuff he was doing. And so he didn't. He was on three stations in seven years before he decided to call it quits. So when I moved to Pittsburgh, the station I worked for, Stern was the morning guy, and I was hired to be the afternoon guy. So that was when I really started to hear uh, Howard Stern. And I'm a fan. We all operate in his shadow. He's the guy that laid the groundwork for uh, all the stuff um, the people in our line of work do. And if you listen to his show, his parents were, uh, he would uh, do his own imitation of them, but they were, you know, there was nobody putting their parents on the radio, really, before he started to do that. And so he would talk about them, and they kind of became characters in their own right. But his parents were still alive. They're very old. They're both in their 90s. And uh, his dad died. I texted my wife this earlier, and she goes, she was joking. She goes, oh, no, who did he leave all of his money to? And I was like, what? It took me a second to realize that she thought, she read it as Ben Stein. Oh. <laughs> you know, when Ben Stein's money. And I go, no, 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 Ben Stern died. And uh, so, that whole thing. So, people who are still fans of Howard Stern uh, and keep up with that, 
He's not uh, currently on the air live this summer to talk about it. I'm sure he will when he returns. A lot of people had the butt bongo fiesta VHS. You know, this is a guy who... And I will say that my enjoyment of that show has waned considerably over the pandemic because he kind of retreated to his house, and I don't think that he has any intention of ever going back into the studio. And that's, that's made the hijinks that can happen in a live studio kind of dissipate. And so it's, uh, you know, I have been a fan for a long, long time, not only as someone in this industry but just as someone who has enjoyed that show for a long time, but I've kind of, I don't find myself uh, interacting with it as often as I did. Alan, is Sal from Dairyman's ever going to be in the studio? I think Sal passed away too. No, he's still out there. <laughs> he's still out there. I'm almost positive that Sal from Dairyman's passed away. He's not dead as far as I know. My as parents I understand it, had... Sal from Dairyman's passed is, away. I just had... Which is why I okay. can never have him in the studio again. All right, fine, because he's dead. That... <laughs> <laughs> thought my parents would have told me, but uh, okay. You thought your parents would have told you? Yeah, a family friend. Oh. Yeah. We just had lunch last week. Bill, I'm sorry to tell you, he died after lunch. Mm. He had some... <laughs> right then, huh? Yeah, well, where did you guys... I heard he got some bad Asian carp. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> that will do it. Yeah, that's a, that's a shame. It's a, you shouldn't be eating the Asian carp anyway. Mm. Not really a great fish to eat. <laughs> it's an invasive species, mm -hmm. and it will really invade your gut biome. And who knows what it'll do to it. Uh, for everybody hitting me up about Anne Heche, yes, we covered this at the very top of the show. It was. I already the, made a joke about the, it. Mary's like, no, don't do that. The news was about 10 minutes old when we got on the air, and so very top of the show today. But thank you for trying to keep me in the know. I do appreciate that. Alan, I agree with Pound Cake and the best friends in their own lanes. I have a decent following on TikTok, and I have my influencer friends that are like work friends, and then my normal friends who don't mix well with the influencer. I guess if that's your job, those are like your work friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except you and Erica were in the same business for a long time. Prior to her influencer friends, you were friend friends. Yes, but we were also... Until you made her very sick and put her at the edge of death. Somebody texted me and referred to you as an influencer. <laughs> Ian calls me Cody COVID. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, what a great nickname to have now. That albatross around your neck. Yeah, well, it was an accident. I didn't do it on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I mean, Erica and I, yeah, we were professional friends, but we were also, we got really close during our time on the show. Like, we, I don't know what, what it was, but we just clicked. So, Oh, I know. We, she we, still mm. posts, uh, you know, my ride or die. Uh, like, on your birthday and stuff, she'll uh, still post mm -hmm. these, uh, my ride or die. So... Because you didn't treat her as poorly as you treat Mary Santora. Oh, please. I don't need him. I have a gay b b black best friend. <laughs> I don't need you. <laughs> I have a gay blah a, blah for fun. Yeah. Can... She, she's got a gay black. She's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this guy, Drew, when I first heard about him, I was like, hey. And then I was like, no, she she needs this. Like, she has two gay friends. Like, and... This one just happens to be more good looking, more successful, crazy rich, uh, very stylish, has a lot of celebrity friends, uh, lives in Los Angeles, everything Ooh. she could possibly ever want, and she's still slumming it with me. So I really appreciate it. And I got her sick. <laughs> so that should tell you the type of character Erica is. She's just, why do you why do you uh, characterize it as her slumming with you? Because I, I don't offer her anything other than friendship. So she's really friends. Why with do you me. have to offer her anything other than friendship? Well, it, I don't necessarily business that she's in. I don't necessarily have to, but I mean, friends should offer you something. Like there, there's perks of being a, someone's friend. Yes, friendship. Okay, but like Drew can also offer her friendship, and if she ever needs a place to stay in Los Angeles or people to be connected with, he's got her. And I right, or she could just pay for a hotel room when she travels. Or she could do that. <laughs> I, I don't. Even if I, I don't understand why you're down in yourself in this whole scenario. Oh no, he's he's very intimidating. I, I think you're placing too much emphasis on somebody just because they have a lot of. But that's who he is. That is who I followers. am. Er, Erica, I, like I could never 
like not be her friend because she was the reason why I came out of my shell. Like I was always a hermit. It wasn't necessarily I, I like doing the show because it's I have to, I'm forced to talk to people. But like Erica was the one that showed me she was my ambassador to the flats. Like all of her friends, all the connections I have in Cleveland were through her. She was a socialite. So her socialite friends became my socialite friends. I got into clubs for free. I got drinks for free, boys for free, like all of it. It was great. You know how when Poundcake first joined the show, we're like, he was Boy, in, I, I hope sure this guy comes come out, out of his, of his shell. shell. I'm talking about going out. Like I didn't, I wasn't really a clubber. I would, it was like college stuff, but never like downtown Cleveland. I didn't, I didn't really like clubs. I liked house parties. But you don't any do that stuff anymore, really. I really don't. I, Vegas was again coming out of my shell because it was a family vacation. And then when what we, happened? When we start the new show at 668 Euclid, by the way, Gwen has asked me to start referring to you as downtown Cody Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I, my friend's mom already refers to me that, so she's late. Jeez, oh, you hear that, Gwen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not original, I guess. I guess not. Downtown Cody Brown. Hmm. Uh, iHeartRadio app, if you're listening there, you can always leave us messages. You'll see that little talkback button there. Hey, I got a chance to look at your guys' new studio over at, at the Alec Cox show. It looks fly. Matter of fact, whenever they break that summoning rule of putting stickers and stuff like that up there, y'all need to put anything that's up there. That wall is too plain too gray. Y'all got to make something happen out of that. But this is your boy, DJ Raven from the Blacklist. 110. I'll let y'all later. DJ Raven. I do what rule did he say? The, the nothing on the walls. Yeah, but I I do I agree with that summoning rule. I don't. What, what does that mean? Uh, what? No Ouija boards. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing we're allowed to bring. That's right. You have to use the Ouija board every day. I do not. You do. No. Well, so you don't get your parking spot anymore. Yes. <laughs> we are bringing the Ouija board down. You we're, can't. Where are you gonna put it? In your locker? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And then I will bring it out and mm-hmm. put it in the studio every single day, next to the pogo stick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just so many failed. <laughs> Items, I guess. Failed items. We never used that pogo stick. We it's never did our pogo stick. It's because we went right into a pandemic. Unless we do it Monday. We went into a pandemic. No, it wasn't. We were supposed to do the pogo stick challenge last year, and Cody got COVID. That's yes, what it was. because of a pandemic. No, we were already a year into the pandemic. But he brought it to our doorstep. Yeah, last yes. December. The influencer over here. <laughs> Because he had to do all the our last shows from home, remember? Yeah. So I'm going to bring the pogo stick into the new studio. Okay. And I'm going to wait for somebody to complain about it. Just wait for somebody to complain about it. 15 minutes in. You set it down. First break, someone walks in and is like, uh... Too bad. <laughs> I do agree that the walls are just too plain, though. I think people will get tired of that. I well, think, I'm, what bringing, they people. Wanna, I'm bringing the lights, so we'll have yeah. lights, so so it won't be that grayness. It'll have a little more pop to it, and I think with... I don't care it, what the walls can, look yeah, like. I think people will want it to look be a little more homey. I don't know. Home? We don't live there. <laughs> but It might feel like we do, but we don't live there. That's where we work. We're gonna, a home for the listeners. It's a place of business. And with, like, my shot and Mary's shot, it's pretty tight, so you're really only getting yeah. the background, and then I'm going to tighten up Alan's shot too so it's not as much dead space it's only him. gonna feel weird because be we have so much crap here yeah right but right. It you is know a- how this uh phone that doesn't work behind you <laughs> that tv the, that was there the, yeah, for 15 years uh-huh. uh, my the, tv's still here the duster uh spray can and all that stuff just makes it real <laughs> homey here no can I, homey mm-hmm. can i take this dvd in. player What's that? Can I take this DVD player? I'm sure you can. (laughs) I don't think anybody's going to go to fisticuffs with you over the DVD player. I'm fighting for it. Yeah. (gasps) It opens. It still works. Yeah. It's Just because it's been here for 20 years doesn't mean anybody's used it. It was the last time. We used to have direct TV in there, too. I know, right? Right? That's how I would... I'd have to record things in there on the TiVo to get the audio from it. The the olden days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that the summoning that that guy was talking <laughs> I think about there? So. What Is it was where that? there's like a howling noise or something? It's Probably Cody. something rolling down the hallway there. Oh, but yeah. we won't have a hallway anymore at the new place, just an open kind of atrium space. So now when I need to stick my head out of the studio to yell at somebody, who are you going to yell at? You know, everybody. You know I love to yell. Uh, <laughs> We're going to hear him pacing. I'll be yelling <laughs> at everyone. 
That's what I'm most looking forward to. To begin yelling at people. Driving home today, I was like, <laughs> because of the kind of just grab a desk and work layout that it is, I was yeah. like, maybe I'll get in early and I'll do research and I'll work on things. I'll work on things. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Except in. that it's not grab a desk. They've already been assigned to people. All which I them? which I fully do not understand. I thought it was no one's allowed to be here unless you're here for the day for an hour. Grab a desk. I don't know about that. All I know is that initially, because the desks there are numbered, it's like an open workspace for people to know what we're talking about or haven't walked by the studios there. So, uh, they're the the workspaces they numbered. They're numbered, right? So initially they were like, oh, there's this website you go on and you reserve by the number or whatever. But then apparently in the interim, they all got assigned because they want a bunch of people back in the office. I'm like, we're never going to have every a person at every one of these That's desks. It's never going to look like that. No. So I don't know. There's, there's gonna too be, many people working from home. Well, there's going to be days of the week, I guess, where people have to be there or something. It's like, good luck with that. But uh, yeah, because I'm going to have to just prep in the studio because I don't have an office anymore. So I'm going to have to post up in the studio. But you won't be able to get in as early, right? Because the I, I morning come in. show's in there. Nolan? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, sit at at a, I'll sit at a desk mm-hmm. until Nolan's done, and then I'll go in at 10 or 10.30 or whenever he's done but with that, his post show. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be, whatever. Who cares? It'll be a little wonky. You'd be like me. Wake up at 10. Get in at 10.30. You're going to love this No, because I go in after I, dr- I drop my kid off at school. Uh, listen, let me help you. She goes to school. I take her to school. Tell I come her to go to I, school later. Yeah, come just work. drop her off at 9.45. Yeah. <laughs> Get downtown by 10. Late arrival. I wish she school started need... earlier. Ew. Why? So I could get to work earlier. I don't believe that. Why? You want to be here at 7 in the morning? Yes. Why? You know I'm putting this show together all the time, I right? So it's that, like but you it, need, th- I'm always working. You would want, and you need an extra two hours? I need, an, I need an extra every single hour I can possibly have. Do you know yes. how long it took him to prep this conversation we're having right now? Hours, apparently. I just lost my place in the script, Bill. <laughs> Where <would> I... <laughs> sure, you don't want to go earlier. You really want to be down there all day long. And then I said... Bottom of page 84. Oh, God. Come on, Alan. We highlighted your part for you. And then uh, that's why it shouldn't be on yellow legal pad with a highlighter. I can't believe I, you oh, write this God. all by hand every day. I longhand. In, that's you know why how he I like all it. that time. Why do you think I'm going through all these black sharpies because we all have to be able to read it. Oh god. This is why I wanted blinds so when people walk by they don't see me reading all of our mm. lines now. Mm. You don't want to go downtown early. Jo- oh, I can go back. What, Pick uh, a desk. Why are my lines always misspelled? Sal's dead. Oh god. I got to completely lost my place. Now they'll it'll be, you know, it'll be little um uh, it'll be little uh, tweaks and things like that that we'll figure it out. Yeah. Listen, my primary priority is make sure Pound Cake is sequestered in a studio where nobody can see him or hear him. That's all that we need, Out. right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Rouse! That's all we need. He'll be back there. I'll dial him up based on whatever studio he's in. He can be in any one of, those, one of those studios. I'll dial him up. Mister, I walk nine miles a day. I'm so fit. I'd eat 300 calories. Uh, we're walking into the parking garage today, and he goes, I'm up on floor three. I was like, oh, me too. He walks out of the building and toward the elevators. I was like, if we're only on the third floor, why don't we take the stairs? He's like, I guess we're on that hill thing. I was like, all <laughs> mad about it. I was like, two sets of stairs are going to put you out, bro? Mind, like, mind you. Mind you. taking the stairs here. He's like wanting to lose all this weight, but was aggravated that I suggested we take two flights of stairs. Oh, but mind you, I, I didn't even realize that I was on the same floor as you. Like literally, I was a couple parking spots down from you. And I was like, I'm I on the- I get out at the second floor and he goes, no way you parked on the second floor. And I was like, yeah, that's my car right there. And then he must have went back up I went floor. all the way. Yeah, I went all the way up to the fourth because I was like, I saw the fourth floor sign as I was walking off. So I'm like, it must be like the next level must have been four, like, you know, at the slant. And- I, it wasn't. It was two. <laughs> it wasn't. And you made a beeline for the elevator. That's what he wanted. Well, that, to well that's where. The, that's how I knew. If where you to hadn't go. intercepted him, he would have gone on the elevator. He would have gone on the elevator to go Absolutely. up. Literally, probably twelve stairs. Yeah. Eh, maybe more than that. Maybe twenty. If you were on the ninth floor of something, I could maybe see that. But two floors, why would not take the stairs? Well, it wasn't necessarily the steps. It was. I said it looked sketchy. And by the way... He said people get raped in here. Said, no, it's, it's 11 a.m. By the way, <laughs> people get raped in here. You know people get raped everywhere, right? Um, you're going down the steps, by the way, to get to the station. No, we were going up them. This was after we were done. Right. But half the day, you're going down the steps. Right. You're not going up steps twice a day. You're going up steps once a day. 
Down steps to get to work. That's harder. Up steps to get to your car, <laughs> which you then sit in and roll home. Correct. <laughs> this is going to be the best five hundred dollars you ever, ever got. Gotten. It's not going to matter. Uh, not going to matter how it comes to you. He's going to hit his. It's going to be the sweetest five hundred dollars you ever got. Here's my prediction. He's going to hit his goal weight by his birthday, which is September eighth, ninth, eighth. Eighth. Okay. Within the next month, he's going to hit his goal weight, and then there's. I don't think you'll be able to keep the next it off month. For the next three months. That sounds really quick. He's already like Is halfway he? there. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't say I was halfway there. No, I, I told you when I started working out again. Remember, I told you I was at one ninety, so I gained those two pounds. I don't think I haven't weighed myself uh, since then, so I don't think I've lost. We'll weigh you. We'll weigh you again on Monday. Okay. All this other dumb crap we're talking about, I have to remember to put a scale in my locker <laughs> so that we can <laughs> weigh him. The Ouija board, the scale, mm. and the pogo, pogo stick. stick. <laughs> the dumbest three things you've ever heard. I'm going to take a break. If you want to get those uh, Guar tickets, I have one more pair to hand to you. Guar is due on September 15th at the House of Blues. And if you want to be there, I'll hook you up shortly. 35192 to text for anything else, and we'll be back. This. 